at flyags.com. The Live 5 for 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Well, Alberto is gone, but could there be somebody else behind it? Possible trauma development not too far off our shore. That's a possibility. So we'll track it and we'll talk about it. Right now on News Channel 6 at 4, code enforcement spending the day in one South Augusta neighborhood. We'll explain why. Plus, a warning about an old scam making the rounds again, targeting grandparents. And a new resource center for Alzheimer's and dementia opens in Augusta. We'll take you to the grand opening event as your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you for joining us. Brad is on assignment. Coverage you can count on begins in Aiken County, where a murder suspect is now behind bars. 22-year-old Christian Reeves turned himself in today. He was wanted in connection to the death of Richard Carroll, Jr. Carroll was shot on Red Rock Way in Graniteville on June 8th. He later died at the hospital. Prior to Reeves arrest, Aiken County officers along with SWAT conducted a search of a home on Lock Lane Southeast. After some time trying to make contact, law enforcement discovered he was not inside the home. A bond hearing was held today in Washington County for a woman charged with defrauding more than 300 victims in 25 states. Authorities say 32-year-old Destiny Magoon promised keepsakes for loved ones and did not deliver on that promise. During a search of her home last month, investigators found items ranging from baby hair to breast milk, even ashes. Magoon is charged with 12 counts of felony theft. A judge denied bond at today's hearing. A warning from the Georgia's Attorney General. The menacing grandparent scam is once again targeting older adults. The scammer will pretend to be your grandchild or one of their friends and say they need bail money or maybe they've become ill while traveling internationally, and they say they need the money to return home. We just keep ask people to stay vigilant. If a phone call comes in, if an email comes in, if a text comes in uh, that you aren't expecting, don't respond. If somebody's saying you owe them money, pick up the phone, go to their website, make sure you validate it. You, you confirm uh, that it's legitimate because a lot of them are not. Investigators say don't give out your social security number, birthday, credit card number, or banking information over the phone. It's very important to protect your personal information. The Richmond County Marshal's Office is sending a message in one Southside neighborhood. The Marshal's Office, Code Enforcement, and Animal Service are putting boots on the ground in Apple Valley. It was prompted by numerous code violation complaints like overgrown lots, abandoned vehicles, and blighted property. The goal is to identify the violations and get them cleaned up. I think what's going to be more important is the fact that we follow up and take action. And then when all this is said and done, and if we have to make cases, we make the cases. Uh, but, our, but our end goal, obviously, is compliance. We, we want folks to simply just comply. Uh, this is the last step that we have before we would begin issuing you know, citations or taking enforcement action, those types of things. Commissioner Tony Lewis, who helped organize the walkthrough, says it's important to show the property owners who are in violation of codes that the city is serious about getting neighborhoods cleaned up. All right, let's take a look outside. You. Some construction taking place downtown on Green Street is causing trouble for folks in the area. A large section of Green Street is closed due to improvements from 13th Street to East Boundary. The improvements include resurfacing and reconstructing the existing curb and gutter, sidewalks, and storm sewer system. The project's goal is to help reduce accidents in the area, but some who live nearby say it's making things harder. What it does is it just creates all kinds of, of confusion and people even want to do an Uber or Lyft to go somewhere. I can't go anywhere because to get delivery, you can't really get delivery down here. So it's not just people trying to get back and forth to work. It's the people here who are locally just trying to get by. The project started in 2023 and will continue for the next 30 to 36 months. A full list of project and construction details is on the city's website. And we'll have more on this story coming up at 5 and 6. 
Speaking of downtown Augusta, there are some changes to traffic this weekend you need to be aware of. Starting at noon tomorrow, both lanes on the river side of Broad Street between 8th and 9th will be closed until after the Augusta Pride Festival is over. This means you'll have to find an alternate route until Sunday. Augusta City leaders are discussing ways to make neighborhoods better, and they want your input. It's part of the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing. Cities and counties in the state can submit an application to receive services to develop more housing in their neighborhoods. Out of 18 applications, Augusta was one of four cities selected. The Turpin Hill area was strategically chosen for its development potential. But first, project leaders want more input from the community. We need to hear from the residents. We need to hear about what they think their needs are, what they know they want in their community, because it's, it's their neighborhood. They live in these neighborhoods. Their history is in within these neighborhoods. Tonight's community meeting starts at 6 o'clock at the Carrie May Center on 11th Avenue. A third and final meeting will be held in September. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month and Via Cognitive Health held a ribbon-cutting ceremony today for a much-anticipated new facility. Graham Lee reports. Via Cognitive Health has been serving families facing Alzheimer's for the last 30 years at their Central Avenue location. But thanks to generous donors, they now have a brand new facility to provide even better services. They've been working on getting the facility for the last eight years working with partners here and around the country. The new campus features a putting green, hair salon, and an art studio for families to enjoy. Executive Director Jennifer Pennington says it's a big step forward to improve the care they provide. Unfortunately, uh, this is a disease that uh, there is no cure for, and uh, there are some strides in medication, and we hope to see more of those in the coming days. Um, but right now, we are here to help families um, manage the journey and live the best life possible while they're living with this disease. Bennington says while there is no cure for Alzheimer's, the organization still needs volunteers to help make a difference. You can find more information at WJBF.com. In Augusta, Green Lee, WJBF, News Channel 6. All right. This weekend, a large church is partnering once again with the Alzheimer's Association for an important event. So with Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body, this workshop covers four areas, and that's cognitive activity, physical health, and exercise, diet and nutrition, and social engagement. Unfortunately, we do not have a cure for Alzheimer's disease right now, and we don't know how to prevent it, but we do know certain lifestyle factors that can contribute with lowering our risk of developing Alzheimer's and dementia. So we'll look at those lifestyle changes to see how they can be beneficial to our brain and body to hopefully lower the risk of someone developing it in the future. The Alzheimer's workshop is free and the public's welcome to attend. It's Saturday at 9 a.m. at Greater Young Zion Baptist Church on Sandbar Ferry Road. The families of critically ill children in our area are getting some much needed help. Back in April, the owners of local McDonald's franchises helped raise $9,000 through their Happy Meals for the House fundraiser. The check was presented today to the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Augusta. We are so excited because our local McDonald's owner-operators do so many things to support us. McDonald's for RMHC, uh, McDonald's is the founding and forever partner. Uh, we are their charity of choice. That money stays local, um, and that's all part of how we support uh, what we do at RMHC to be able to take care of children and families, uh, keeping families close to their child while their child is, is in the hospital. The Ronald McDonald House hosts families of children who are being treated in Augusta. To volunteer or donate, go to their website, rmhcaugusta.org. Coming up, how baseball legend Willie Mays and fellow Negro League greats are being honored tonight. Well, summer is here in about 40 minutes. Exactly. The first day of summer is going to be live until uh, 4.50. A 
America's oldest ballpark is set to host its first Major League Baseball game tonight in a tribute to the Negro Leagues, the San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals will face off at Rickwood in Birmingham, Alabama. D. Jackson explains why this game is monumental. It is the talk of the town, the talk of the nation, Rickwood Field, and tonight it is the tribute to the Negro Leagues. The St. Louis Cardinals in town taking up the San Francisco Giants. And last night we had a fun time watching some celebrity softball. That's right, some big name players out there. But I got a chance to talk to one guy in particular. Latroy Hawkins actually used to play for the San Francisco Giants and has very fond memories of the late Willie Mays. Willie's just sitting in Uncle Murph's office, just chilling every day, getting a chance to talk to him and tell him my, he's my grandfather's favorite player. And put your, get your grandfather on the phone. So, you know, call my grandfather. He had a chance to speak to his favorite player at all times. I'm still trying to grasp, you know, the whole meaning of it. But of all the places, I'm glad I'm here today because this is where you would want to be. Of a bunch of people who love Willie Mays, who love baseball, who love Birmingham, who want to visit Rickwood Field. This is where you want to be. And so I'm so happy to be here on this day. It's sad that at the same time, it's going to be a historic day. I think many people will remember where they were when they heard that news, and they're going to think of Birmingham in a very positive light. I am so proud of Birmingham, the city of Birmingham. Look at this field. The fact of the matter is that Miles College baseball team plays in this field, and so they're going to benefit from having all of this great construction, and uh, it's a way of paying it forward. So when you think about the past and the present and the future, it's all good. A pre-game ceremony honoring the life of baseball great Willie Mays will be held prior to tonight's game. First pitch is at 7.15. We'll be right back. Weather headlines on WJBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. Get better room for entertaining, relaxing, and more with patio enclosures. Right now, get 25% off your sunroom. Plus, enjoy exceptional financing. Call today. Patio enclosures. Are you frustrated because in lots of places, customer service has just disappeared? Not at Tile Center. Not where you need it the most. Here, you will find all of us eager to help you find just the right tile or stone. So you can relax, knowing your project is in expert hands. Come see why for yourself at any of our locations at Tile Center or online at tilecenter.com. Your tile and stone experts. Hey, Sister Rick, Mike Murphy. The old Edgefield Butcher Shop. A local school teacher with a vision of love. They want them to feel safe in their own environment, in their own community. For a teacher to step outside and do something, I really appreciate it. They give the kids something to do besides getting in trouble. News Channel 6 shows you how one woman is making a difference outside the classroom. My main mission out here was really to just show these kids, hey, nice here for you. Beyond the Classroom, Tuesday on Good Morning Augusta. News Channel 6 and the Giving Your Best Partners want to give special thanks to all of our viewers for donating helpful items to Taji's Tents and serving their mission of ending homelessness in the CSRA. Thank you for giving your best. This is not the find you really want to make during a trip to a Goodwill store. Employees at a Goodwill in Stafford, Virginia, found a four-foot-long snake snuggled with a pile of donated books. The Sheriff's Department put out a statement saying no snakes, employees, or deputies were harmed during the incident. The snake ended up being released back into the wild. There is more coverage in the on coming up at 4.30, including the latest on the high-low trail being built in the Peach State and its expected completion date.